All right, Conan O'Brien here. Welcome to episode three of the reading of the lost Hans and Franz script. Here with Dana Carvey, Kevin Nealon, Robert hi. Smigel, myself. No reason to say hi, really, not at all. No, just I just, a, I'm courteous and I'm friendly. Yeah, and you're also chewing something, which I think fine. <laughs> it's, it's cud. Okay, <laughs> like a cow in the corner. Cud. It's just a... <laughs> We find ourselves in this episode, uh, we're in Beverly Hills, and I think there's an evil plot that's- uh, Oh, yes. That's it, that's mm -hmm. at work here. Some girly man abductions are gonna take place. So let's set the scene. Exterior Beverly Hills day. Muscle men goons walking purposely down a Beverly Hills street. They kick down a door, rush in, emerge with Gavin McCloud <laughs> <laughs> in mid-eating of a sandwich. <laughs> the actor who played the captain on the love boat. A goon spray paints one less girly man on the wall. <laughs> oh, Bob Saget was in this. Oh, yes, that's sure. That's too bad. God rest your soul, Bob. Uh, our thoughts go out to you. What about Gavin? What about his soul? Oh, right. <laughs> what about Ebert? Nah. Yeah. Holy I'm smokes. Sorry. It's like Saget's got the only soul around here. What the hell? I knew Gavin McCloud. That man had no soul. <laughs> Bob Saget on the set of his show, a net is thrown over him and Muscleman goons drag him off. Insert TV screen. A newscast in progress. A picture of John Ritter. God over the, oh my soul. God. Is there anyone alive in this anyone? movie? What do you, what, what's, you your take, what? what's your take on his soul? Would you like God to rest it? <laughs> my take is, I already my said take it. it is that this script is like The Ring. Oh yeah. Anybody who's oh, in it Oh, it's been dies. 30 years. Let's do it just a blanket. Yeah. God One's rest suspect. everyone on this movie soul. Who's no longer here. Who's uh, Okay, yeah. Kate, insert Devin TV Kena. screen. Okay. A newscast in progress, a picture of a very much alive John Ritter over the anchor woman's shoulder, <laughs> subtitled Girly Nap. Once again, a message was left, this time reading, what a complete girly man. The total is now at 16 girly nappings as... Insert another report. A possible breakthrough in the girly nap mystery. The term girly man has been traced to an obscure bodybuilding program. A clip of pumping up with Hans and Franz is played. That was canceled not long ago before the first girly <laughs> nap occurred. Interior Arnold's living room later. Hans and Franz and Arnold are lounging in their later hosen. <laughs> <laughs> Each drinking a blender full of protein shake. What do they mean, obscure? Yeah. Fellas, this is not good. Why? Jealous we're on TV? We got big problems. Someone is jealous. Yes. Jealous. <sighs> Arnold sighs in frustration. Exterior, Arnold's Schmutz house, night. Snoots and Gratzen. Snoots and Exterior, Arnold's house, night. A slew of police cars descend upon the house. Interior, Arnold's living room, later. Several investigators are questioning Hans and Franz as Arnold watches. Have you ever used the term girly man? Yeah. When was the last time you used it? <laughs> oh, about a minute ago. <laughs> as the investigators take yeah. notes, Arnold interrupts. Excuse me, Sergeant, but this is so ridiculous. I've known these guys a long time. Plus, I'm a huge star. Doesn't that count for some favoritism? You're right, Mr. Schwarzenegger. We're sorry to take up your time. Everyone gets up <laughs> just then. <laughs> it's just that easy. <laughs> it actually is. Just then, a few cops emerge from the basement. Sir, we've located a breakdown in the security systems downstairs. Well, Arnold runs to the open wall where the box of crackers is missing. <laughs> My crackers! <laughs> Who could have taken them? <laughs> Only we knew about them. I mean... But we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid we're going to have to bring your cousins in for more questioning. Arnold, please. Let it wait until tomorrow. For God's sakes, I'm bigger than Clark Gable. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> also dead. The investigator and cops leave. <laughs> we're innocent, Arnold. Believe us now. Put your hand on your bicep. Do you swear on your cardiovascular system so help you buttock muscle? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. All right. So now what do we do? You've got the cops after you, and I've got no crackers. <laughs> I know, it's really getting an exciting. Yeah, yeah, I wonder what he thinks. What who thinks? Follow up. Hans and Franz run through another secret door with Arnold following them. Interior screening room, moments later, Hans and Franz walk behind the aisle towards Ebert's seat. Again, movie critic. <laughs> Arnold trails behind. What's the deal, fellas? Pretty damn good, huh, Ebert? The seat is empty, except for some popcorn and candy. Yeah, Ebert? They notice the empty seat and look to camera. They got, they got e Ebert. They got e Ebert. E Ebert. Interior lair, same. Roger Ebert is struggling on a cross-country <laughs> skiing machine. <laughs> Wearing shorts and a tank top. A muscle man goon cracks a whip behind him as he huffs and puffs. Rolf walks by. Spare no discipline. 
This one's a project. <laughs> Good one, Lieutenant. With these mass building crackers, our plan cannot fail. I'll commence feeding immediately. <laughs> Soon the girly man will be ready to enter the Mr. Little Austria contest, <laughs> where I will display them to the world. Yes. Good. And what about the environment? Oh, it's smarting. <laughs> Looks right to camera. It's smarting! <laughs> 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 Insert movie screen. The same scene is continuing on the screen. Rolf and Mr. X laughing. <laughs> Interior screening room. Hans and Franz are watching it gently, sitting and eating Ebert's popcorn. Unbelievable. It was Rolf all along. What a cad. He's got my crackers. And how about the other guy? Yeah, with the voice. Yeah, he's terrible too. It's a great movie though. Yeah, but the crackers. <laughs> they're not ready to be eaten. They're going to have side effects. Terrible side effects. You've got to get back to Little Austria and stop them. The entire town is in great danger. Oh, no. How much time into the side effects? They will take effect. Turning right into camera. In T minus 72 hours. <laughs> Music, dramatic sting. As Arnold speaks, a digital clock readout marked time until side effects. 72 <laughs> hours appears in the lower side of left corner and immediately starts ticking down. Oh no, what, what do we do? You've got to get the antidote to the girly man. Here it is. Arnold produces and hands them a can of Cheese Whiz. It comes in the form of Cheese Whiz. Now go! <laughs> All right, well, clearly, uh, we keep inserting words we just want Arnold to say, like cheese whiz and crackers. Cheese whiz and crackers. Cheese whiz. This is one of my favorite things in the movie. This is one of my favorite things I ever, the Siskel and Ebert thing, or it was it was originally Siskel and Ebert, but Ebert, that was funny to me to just put, have Arnold, and I mean, have these guys walk and watch a critic in the middle of the movie, like several times. But then it got to this stage of the movie, and all of these bad comedies back then had like, there were two things that, I really wanted to do in this movie was like have the bad guy be funny, yep. which just what didn't exist. Like all these eighties movies were funny in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. but they would always have that serious bad guy, like Max von Sydow that you'd right, have to right. take. Mm -hmm. Unlike and the here, Marvel movies now where right. they're all like at that little kind of a oh, everything twist. Everything's a uh, wink. Yeah. Austin Powers. Austin Powell. Well, he's yeah. like, he, he cracked the code. He came right. up with a character as funny as, uh, as the main guy, but, uh, but the whole Rolf thing for one thing, like, I, I love that because it was like, it was sort of a final solution joke. <laughs> I mean, it's from my dark Jewish I, I sensibility. Sort of, when I was, was looking like at it this got, morning, I thought it was a little. Yeah, no, like it's a, the bad guy who wants to take, uh, who wants to take what you guys do mm -hmm. way too far. Right. Yeah. And then the other thing in these movies was there would be like these messages about things like the environment. Yes. In these bad 80s comedies, like they'd try to have a morality play going on at the same time. A lot of the, it got into the save the world yep. mentality. Yep. So which comedy? I love the idea that Rolf is this uh, Caddyshack or what do you? Which ones? No, not Caddyshack, oh. but like Spies Like Us kind of movies or Whoa. Dragnet. There were there, oh. there were a lot of serious bad guys in these movies, and that would sort of stop the film cold. Yeah. So then here, I love the idea of like Rolf. He had his he had his first plan about you know just eliminating girly men, but then just tacked on gratuitously. And I'm going to hurt the environment. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, also that it's just a button. Yeah. He just pushes a button that yeah. hurts the environment. <laughs> the environment hurter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we get to this point in the movie, and another device that's always in these kinds of movies is like you have to figure out a way for the hero to find out what the bad guy's up to. And it's always some lame device overhearing, you know. It's a button. Over here. Yeah, the overhear <laughs> button. And yeah. here, like, they Just can watch. accidentally, yeah. we'd set up this thing where Ebert's watching the movie. So they walk <laughs> in, and instead of it just being the third version of this joke, they actually get to watch what's happening. They find out about the bad guy right. yeah. by watching the movie. I think I it's, is it meta? Is that the joke? Yes, that it's was, it was the first, meta. The first meta. meta joke ever. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Not the Facebook parent company. <laughs> I also love that when you read a script, a normal script, 
oftentimes, if someone's introduced, it says someone like a Kirk Cameron, or someone <laughs> like, Kurt but Cameron. we're, you know, I'm just throwing out random names yeah, or some, yeah. you know, someone like a Rob Lowe, but, but because we were starting with the assumption that Arnold Schwarzenegger is gonna be more than half the movie. <laughs> once, you, once you've swallowed that yeah. pill, we go hog wild and it's, and, and, and suddenly we're just throwing people in the movie left and right. Who, Without a doubt. Who, yeah. Yeah. hey, oh, we will do it. If yeah. Arnold will do it, if Ar Sonny Bono will do it. Yeah, Arnold's just, Arnold can just call people up and say, you're doing it. And he was, you know, he could do it. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. I love that just the, we yes. were so sure that we everyone- dreamed big. Sure. <laughs> we swung for the fences. Hmm. And ultimately, no one did it. Is that right? Yeah, no one did it. Oh, Didn't come to it. fruition, as they well, say. Well, no, you're ruining the ending, because I think a lot of people listening don't know if this movie was ever made or not. So let's keep that as a possibility. Maybe it did come out. Maybe, and maybe, they, it, maybe they read the e Ebert may, book. Maybe it was a massive 1992 hit. Could have been, man. Yeah, a lot of off. hits from 1992 have been forgotten, so why why not just... Yeah, let's just tell people believe, it, yeah. it was made, and it actually yeah. did yeah. pretty well. And this is a big reunion. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the real Arnold's on his way. Yeah. Based on a true story. Well, let's not say that it's never been made yet. What can say that? Yet. Yeah. yeah. Good never idea. say never. Yeah. No pain, no gain. All right, should we get back to it? Arnold, too concerned with his Hollywood career to leave, sends Hans and Franz back to Little Austria to infiltrate Rolf's evil lair and save the girly men from becoming out of control, muscle-bound <laughs> monsters. <laughs> Exterior highway night, Hans and Franz ride their tandem bike down a dark highway. We're almost there, Hansi. Yeah, soon we'll be heroes, but how do we get into the evil lair to save the girly man? Well, I'm afraid there's only one way. <laughs> Exterior urban landscape, day, Hans and Franz approach. Interior little Austria entrance, same. They have gone undercover as girly men <laughs> and wear exaggerated disguises. Hans excessively effeminate, Franz excessively nerdy. Clock reads 21 hours, 6 minutes, 28 seconds. Yeah, it's good to be back, isn't it, Hans? Shh, remember, we're girly men. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we must adopt girly mannerism. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interior, Little Austria, Town Square, same. They mill about trying to get noticed. My, look at all the pretty flowers. <laughs> yeah, I would look at them, but I'm too busy not exercising. A few Muslim goons see them and whisper to each other. Hans addresses a woman. Oh, you simply must tell me where you got that top. Yeah, I can't believe my squinty loser eyes. <laughs> the goons approach them. Would you two gentlemen like to come with us? For whatever for? Hans and Franz share a wink as they are taken <laughs> away. Interior, Rolf's lair, moments later. Rolf is examining Hans and Franz, who continue playing up their disguises. Clock, 21 hours, 1 minute, 48 seconds. So glad you could join me. I have special plans for the both of you, <laughs> Hans and Franz. <laughs> Hans and Franz, surprised, drop their attitudes. Take them away! Hans and Franz are grabbed and hauled away. We should have known it would be impossible to hide our considerable bulk. Yeah, yeah, but I think you did have them fooled for a minute there. <laughs> I think you are quite mistaken, my friend, if you thought anyone was a curly man. <laughs> Interior <laughs> lair later. Ebert is inside a machine marked Flabbo Suction. <laughs> <laughs> what was he going to think when he read this? <laughs> it is connected. What time and where? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. Is it Flabbo suction? Yes, yes. The Flabbo suction machine is connected through a network of tubes to Hans and Franz, who are tied down to another machine. Rolf stands triumphantly on a perch above them. The clock now reads 00 hours, 11 minutes, 16 seconds. Oh my God. How fortuitous of you to arrive at this moment. You see, I was just about to suck the flab from this humongous critic. <laughs> Still reading, Ebert? But now that you're here, <laughs> the flab won't go to waste. Our bodies will reject the Ebert flab. Yeah, it's like oil in water. Shut up! Ah! We'll see who can't accept <laughs> Ebert flab. And then Ebert says, could you stop calling it Ebert flab? Please don't give us a bad review. Enough. Commence. 
Flapper suction. <laughs> a muscleman goon hits a switch. Slowly, we see chunks of flab going through the tubing oh. towards Hans and Franz. Oh. Oh. No, I'm too young to be a no, loser. It can't be happening. This is no. not us. Stop it. <laughs> What the hell's going to happen? Wow. I don't know. That was a cliffhanger, guys. It was quite a cliffhanger. We're going to drop off uh, right there for mm -hmm. this episode. I mean, this is uh, that's incredible. Hans and Franz uh, are tied down while chunks of fat are being taken out of revered critic Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert, and, thanks and to the evil Rolf, who, by them. the way, Rolf was, the idea for, to play Rolf was Dol Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like the part where uh, Dana doesn't want me to think he really was effeminate. Or, yeah, man, yeah. or a girly man. Yeah, they're yeah. still bickering mm -hmm. about they've been caught and for all they know they're about to be yes. killed, but they're bickering about- We weren't convincing. Yeah, that oh, was- We were the, convincing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were not. That's the reason, yeah. we are How too could muscular. How we possibly do this? You didn't want anybody to think you were convincing enough yeah. to be a girly man. It's so laughable that anyone <laughs> could think we were properly pumped up. Isn't it funny how I thought we were feminine? I knew it never worked. There's no so, disguising with these yeah. things. I'm these trying to figure racks out. Racks of muscles. Guys, yeah. had we, let's say it had gone ahead and it had come yes. time to send the script to Ebert. <laughs> would, would, I just picture, I know that it would have been Robert and I yeah. on, on, the phone, on the phone or in, yes. person, yes. in person saying, hey, we want to talk to you. And well, then how would we sell that? That it's all about your your flap? Yeah, what would be <laughs> well, in it for I, him? I got to experience this years later doing Triumph. Yep, yep. And I would get people to do stuff in advance and it was always hilarious. Right. Like, and I think Ebert, I mean, I think in this case, Hans and Franz were already hit characters. Ar if Arnold had really done the movie, I, I honestly think a lot of these people- Do you think Ebert would have done it? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. Interesting. I, think so I don't too. think Cisco would though. Ebert was the good one out of the two. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what? And that well, it was, you, was brought up, you brought up Triumph, and I think it's yes. it's worth remembering. I remember uh, when Triumph got got really big and huge. People would contact the you know us and say, "Oh, oh, I want uh, Triumph to get me." And I remembered it was yes. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Yes, remember that was Richie Sambora's. Completely. Yeah, Richie Sambora wanted it, and so yeah, the, and the guys were all excited, and they put. Triumph's picture on the backstage pass. On passes. their backstage pass, And it was a yes. big thing. And then I remembered you went there and all the jokes were so mean at, right, at, about John Bon Jovi. And you thought at the end, is yeah. there some part of him? I oh, remember there was like- He was not, he was the only one. He's very nice to me more uh, in later years, but yeah. I could tell that he was he was not as into it as the well, rest Well, he was of the really band. into getting his, his acting career going. And you said, yes. oh, I understand in this, in this yeah. movie you play a vampire. Finally, a role that requires you to suck. Yes. <laughs> and I saw Brian the Stacks joke. I saw it. the light go out of his eyes a little bit yeah. and I thought, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. I think with Ebert on the set getting the thing hooked up, I, I think oh he would have walked. Oh, yeah. I, There's he was a lot heavier walked? than two. I know. No, no. no really he wouldn't have walked. He couldn't have. He's attached to a hose. <laughs> that was that's, the trick. That's I see. Get your cameos tied up to an object. Yeah. From well, which it's harder well, to, yeah, that was my trick hmm. back to Triumph. Did. No, people like Joey Fatone, they're dying of be, get out there and be shat on. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, they are. No, it was it's like, 11. It, was, it became a high honor, like having Rickles shit on you. It became, yeah, I remember triumph, once yeah, but we did a triumph on uh, late night where, and Simon Cowell was sitting right next to me and you tore into Simon Cowell and I'm sitting oh, right next yeah. to him and you really go at, go at him. And after it was over, he looked at me and he was covered in sweat and he went, that was rough. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. That's so funny because, yeah. like, I remember afterward him telling me, "No, this will be good for me." No, no, no. But he, he everyone, while he was going through it, he said it was. That's rough. so yeah. funny. What would be your opening line to Ebert to try to get him to do this? I would say, uh, Roger, how are hey, you? Congratulations, Arnold Schwarzenegger, biggest star in the world because it's 1991. Wants you to be in his next film. Okay, smile. and he doesn't want Siskel. And he doesn't that want Siskel. Got him. That yeah. Got him. yeah. Oh, I see. That how about you, Smiga? What would you say to him? To Ebert, yeah, um, I would have said uh, uh, this is uh, read the script and see what you think. Uh, I would have tried to be very complimentary that we love your show and so you, know, you would let him discover what the thing was alone. I would have said you. it's you know no. I would have set up the story. I would have said you're going to be there's going to be a whole bunch of celebrities that uh, this this evil guy wants to convert into muscle men. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't I have would, mentioned, that, right. I wouldn't have said that they're all flabby. Can I say one <laughs> thing? What I would have done? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have 
gone back, reread it, and taken out the line that Rolf has. You see, I'm just about to suck the flab from this humongous critic. <laughs> I would have just deleted the line humongous. For now. And then, and then added it yeah. on the day of the shooting. Dolph improvises. You know Dolph. Yeah. He gets, he, you know, you, once yeah. you get Dolph Lundgren yeah. we're going. Gonna, we're just going to try one take where he calls you hum humongous. We won't even use it. Cut yeah. to I the didn't, movie. I didn't see the flabosuction thing in here before. Did you add that, the flabosuction? <laughs> Dana, what would you say? Just seriously, I would, I'd be... He, he I, I would compliment it. him. Yes. You would be. I, you, I would you are say, so averse to conflict. You would be nowhere yeah, around. I would. Dana I would Dana tell him. Dana well, I would tell him you don't really have to do this. You don't yeah, need that's it. For sure. Yeah. That's you don't it. need it, but we think it's uh, a lot of good fun. It's ridiculous. It'll, you would it, have said it's. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's silly. The characters are silly. The whole thing is in good fun. Everyone is having fun in this movie. Yes. And and having fun with their image. So I think it would be really funny. Uh, Roger or R, whatever, uh, E, E, B. Um, yeah, I just would have tried to butter them up, smooth them over. Think and, about this, like, and, for and, triumph and what I did, but, like, you, every everybody you impersonated, well, like, for example, Arnold was dying to do the sketch mm -hmm. on the show, and John McLaughlin and Regis. President Regis. Bush. President Became Bush. Yeah, yeah, all of these people were thrilled to because be here. You weren't talking about sucking flab out of them. Oh, but what you know, <laughs> it, it was still pretty. Uh, Here's what I would say, and this is why I'm not a good negotiator. Mm -hmm. I would open up like this Roger, <laughs> you're not going to like this. <laughs> How about this, Roger? You're not going to like this, but first let's concede you could lose some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You could lose a few pounds. Well, also, besides a competition with Cisco, was there another reviewer that he would maybe hate? And we go, we rejected him. Yeah, we, we rejected you. this other. Or yeah. he's Pauline exactly. Kale. If it's not or you, we're going to get Pauline Kale, and then he has to. <laughs> oh, do right. It. Then he has to do. He, doesn't want, he do. wants to deny Kale the. Yeah. Privilege mm -hmm. of being on. Yeah. Anyway, right, this well, has been okay. Inside Baseball How to Manipulate People to Do Your Project with yes. Conan O'Brien. And, and uh, is, next uh, week, Al helpful. Roker. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is the end of uh, episode three. Join us for episode four, where we, uh, we, we read more of the lost Hans and Franz yes. movie to a nation that just can't get enough. We'll see you then. Yeah.